Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to continue to talk about the match between Barcelona and PSG and go further in depth regarding the tactics that Xavi Hernandez brought against PSG. We're also going to be talking about the decision that led towards Barcelona only playing with 10 men. And we're also going to be breaking this down all into different points. And so if you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. I'm happy you guys are here. If you guys are Barcelona fans, this is going to be the channel for you. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video and also enjoy this channel. So let's first talk about Adulho's action. Action, which will be point number one. And the question is, was Arojo's actions against Barcola wrong? I'm going to say yes. I do believe that what Arojo did that led towards the red card was wrong. Arojo should have never done that. And it all started with him making a misplaced pass from the back. It ended up going to Mendes. Mendes passes the ball to Barcola. And all of a sudden, Arojo found himself in a 1v1 situation with Barcola. And that is what led towards the foul. You can see here that Arojo first puts his left arm to Barcola's face. Then he puts his left leg to Barcola's right leg. That is what made him trip so to me yes this was a complete foul do i also think that this should have been a red card no that is where i do think that uefa really screwed things over for barcelona it should have never been a red card the maximum it should have been was for a yellow card or maybe even a warning and i feel like the reason why arujo made this mistake is because he knew that he made a mistake before that by misplacing the pass that led towards the 1v1 and he wanted to make that up and regain the ball but he got nervous and to be honest guys this is probably the worst thing arujo could have done because barcelona Barcelona in this moment were on a 2-0 lead. We were up by two goals. It was basically 2-0 overall. And there was no reason for Araujo to pull such a risk and to get us into a situation to get a red card. I'm like, dude, okay, fine. Araujo was in that predicament, right? At some point, Araujo should have just said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to make it. There's no reason for me to foul the player. I'm just going to let Ter Stegen handle it. You know what? Ter Stegen has been performing amazing over the past three months. So why not just let Ter Stegen deal with the problem by that point? And even if Barcola ended up scoring in this sequence here, that's fine. Because after that, we could have continued to play with 11 players and maybe turn the game around immediately. But no, we get the worst case scenario from this sequence here and Barcelona had to really suffer off of Arujo's mistake and his decision. Luckily, also, this was outside the box. Like, can you imagine if this happened maybe three to four inches further up the field? The situation could have gone much worse. I want to move on towards point number two and I want to speak about the game plan that Xavi had in the first 20 minutes, which was before Arujo got the red card. And I think that Barcelona's game plan was so solid, right? It was so solid. I'm like, dude, this game plan that we had is going to lead us to progressing into the semis. And it hurts me so much, right? Because I did not even know that Dortmund got into the semifinals. It hurts me so much that Barcelona could have played Dortmund in the semifinals of the Champions League. And the road to the final of the Champions League was so clear. Because can you imagine us playing Dortmund out of all teams in the Champions League semifinal? That probably would have been the easiest semifinal that Barcelona could have ever gotten in their history but it got screwed over. We got knocked out by PSG and that hurts so much knowing that. So we defended in a mid to low block as you can see in the picture here. You can see that they were okay with having players out wide like Dembele or Barcola or Kylian Mbappe or whoever. They did not really care about the open spaces that were left on the right flank or on the left flank because Barcelona were very compact in the middle and that was very expected coming from Xavi's men. They were okay with sitting back just a little bit having PSG have the ball because Barcelona knew that eventually they could find the counter. This was also the shape from Barcelona Barcelona when PSG were playing from the back you can see that they were in a 4-2-3-1 formation very compact in the middle when PSG passed the ball to the back and they were passing back the ball whether it was going through Donnarumma or like some other player like Marquinhos Barcelona pressured very very high that led towards PSG making some mistakes so overall we were very organized we were sturdy disciplined intense and I was proud on just how far Barcelona came because we were again organized and focused we did not allow for PSG to breathe at all and like I've said before Barcelona were okay with PSG having the ball. There were many people saying that, what the heck is wrong with Barcelona? You know, the, these tactics are not working. Barcelona should be having the ball in front of their own fans. But, you know, with the team that we had, we lacked a CDM. And so Xavi had to tweak his tactics a little bit to disrupt the opponent. They had to really adjust themselves to make sure that they were the kryptonite to whatever team they were facing. And so these were the correct tactics and systems that Barcelona had to play in order to disrupt PSG. So overall, our shape and our formation was 100% correct when PSG had possession. When Barcelona had possession, we formed a back three with Arujo in the middle. And one of the key things about this was that the fact that Arujo had the ability to step up with the ball, it is what led towards Barcelona getting the first goal. And they did this over and over again. So let's take this example first, right? Let's talk about Arujo when he steps in and he creates a three versus three situation in the middle of the pitch. This forces for Kylian Mbappe to step up to get Arujo since he does have the ball. And then you can see here in the back that Vitinha had to log 
knock down Gundogan. And then out wide, you can see La Minha Mal open on the wings. So PSG were very focused in the middle because they knew that the game was there. There was a lot of players in the middle. Gundogan was there. Araujo had the ball. Frankie and Pedri were right next to Araujo. So again, the game was there. And because of that, La Minha Mal was open on the wings. And all Barcelona had to do was figure out how can they be efficient on the wings. And Barcelona were going for La Minha Mal because he was the only 1v1 killer when they had the ball. PSG had two 1v1 killers on the wings. It was Dembélé and Barcola. Barcelona only had one. Let's appreciate what Xavi did with such little supply because again, this is what led towards the first goal. So Arujo ended up passing the ball to La Minha Mal because he was wide open. PSG had no idea that Yamal was there. La Minha Mal progresses the ball into the box, beating the left back and then Rafinha ended up finding La Minha Mal's cross and then we were up 1-0. It was an amazing play and every time PSG regained the ball for whatever reason, right? And they were trying to play out from the back. Remember, Barcelona were pressing extremely high. Look at this picture here. Barcelona wanted more, right? They wanted to score more goals, even though they were 1-0 up. You can see that they're pressing extremely high. The player ended up passing it to like some other player, but then it ends up with Araujo receiving the ball because Kylian Mbappe loses it. Rafinha is making a run down the left flank. He passes it to the player on the side. The player passes it back to Rafinha and then Rafinha is looking for the cross into the box and Gundogan makes that run and it was almost a goal. And I'm like, dude, this is exactly what Barcelona should be doing. Everything that Xavi was doing in the first 20 minutes was amazing. We're, we were creating chances, defending well, using La Minha Mal to our advantage, compacting the midfield because Kylian Mbappe could not do anything. Xavi had the answer. But of course, this game plan fell apart because we ended up playing with 10 men. Moving on towards point number three, and I do want to speak about how Barcelona suffered because we had no choice but to invite for the attack from PSG to go on the wings. We had no choice. And as you can see here, you can see why Barcelona invited for Barcola or Dembélé to receive the balls because we, we became very compact and narrow in the middle. We formed a 4-4-1, leaving the wide spaces extremely open. A few minutes later, you can see that Dembélé was unmarked down the right side. And this is how PSG ended up scoring their first goal. Many were saying, Kevin, Barcelona's defense is trash because Dembélé is unmarked. Like, dude, how, what, like, what else do you expect for Barcelona to do when they don't have enough players on the pitch and they're on a numerical disadvantage? It just doesn't make any sense. Of course, Dembélé was going to be open on this sequence here. They had no other choice but to defend the center and that's basically it. And fortunately for PSG, they got lucky by Dembélé positioning himself to find the first goal and he ended up scoring the goal. And PSG were doing this over and over again. Barcola was taking so many touches, Dembélé was finding the ball so many times and we just, again, we had to suffer. We had to suffer throughout the last 70 minutes. Now, here's the thing that does get me like very, I would say happy. I, I will say it did enlighten me a lot. Even though Barcelona were down by one man, they still played with a lot of courage. Just look at how much Barcelona were pressing here and how high they were. You would assume that if a team has one player down, they would just sit back and not even press this high, but Barcelona did that. Pedri was trying to regain the ball. He did He did successfully. He was playing like a monster. The ball eventually ended up going to Lewandowski. He passes it to, to Gundogan and Gundogan almost scored and that could have changed the game for Barcelona. I'm telling you guys, the players did what they could and they still punished PSG. And I'm like, dude, can you just imagine if Barcelona just had one more player? So by the end of the game, in the last, I would say, 15 minutes, the whole game plan was to just make long balls into the front three. That was basically it. Like, it came to a point where, where Rafinha played as a left back and he was making so many long balls to Lewandowski, Joao Felix, and Ferran Torres. But like I've said, and I'm gonna continue to say it, it was not enough. Barcelona could not do anything. When you have Kylian Mbappe, Dembele, Barcola, Asensio on their A game, having a player more than us, eventually you're gonna find out that it's not going to be enough. And the way that we lost in this match, because I, again, I want to really defend Barcelona at this moment because I know the media, I'm talking about like the news outlets, the news companies are gonna try and make Barcelona look like a really bad team right now. And I'm gonna try my best to defend this team in whatever way. But I want to clarify one thing. This loss is not like a loss that we experienced at Anfield. It's not a loss like we have experienced at Rome back in 2017. Those two losses that Barcelona had at Rome and at Anfield, those versions of Barcelona crumbled with 11 players and with experienced players. In the match against Rome, the players were half-assing so many plays. The players that played at Anfield against Liverpool, they were crying mid-game. They lacked a lot of concentration. But these players that played against PSG, they played with 10, they were very young, and they still pushed. They did not back down. The players that we saw play at Rome or Anfield, they backed down. They did not push. And so in the end, I do want to congratulate once more PSG for defeating a under construction FC Barcelona. After spending billions of dollars over the past 10 years, they finally got to their fourth semifinal in their history. The investment that PSG made, right, more than a billion euros for them to go into four semifinals of the Champions League, what a big payoff, right? PSG is such a big club. That
that is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.